Every month I scoured the internet for really cool Linux applications. And when I find them, I put them on a list and then present them to you guys as the top apps of the month. Now it's February, that means it's time for a new list. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first app on the list this month is called Veeb. Now Veeb is a Vim based web browser. Now, if you've ever used something like Cute Browser, it's similar to that, although it's not exactly the same. When I first went into this, I thought it was going to be basically a clone of Cute Browser, but it's not. It actually does things quite a bit different than Cute Browser does in that it has more modes, and really it's a mode based browser. So it has several modes that you can use, like explore mode and search mode and these other things that just kind of facilitate the way you use the browser. But all that aside, the basic functionality of navigating the web is basically the same as any other browser of this vein, where you'd use keyboard shortcuts to navigate between websites and your search history and all this stuff. I will say that it is designed differently than Qt Browser. It does have a configuration file. I didn't get into it all that much. I didn't haven't spent a lot of time with this yet. I want to make a video of that. If you're in, interested in that kind of video, make sure you hit the subscribe button because I think that I'm going to spend some time in Veeb. It looks really interesting. I'm not sure what the differences between Qt Browser and Veeb are like in totality. Like I don't know all the differences yet, so I'm still messing around with it, but I'm really interested to see where those differences lie, how fast it is, and that so on and so forth. In the brief time that I spent with it, it was fairly fast. It's, I'm not going to call it like the fastest browser you've ever seen, because it's not. But I didn't notice that it was horrendously slow either, which is something that you would notice. If you've ever tried Surf before, you'll know that browsers like this can be very, very slow. This was not like that. It was not noticeable in terms of its slowness. It was actually fairly speedy. So that is Veeb. I'm looking forward to giving it a more thorough try. The next one on the list is called Mark Text. Now, Mark Text is a Markdown editor. Now, I've featured several Markdown editors on this list in the past, and they're all varying levels of good. A lot of the times, there's not much you can do to make a Markdown editor special. I mean, it's just going to do Markdown, and as long as it does that well, it's good, right? With Mark Text, I think that I've probably found the best one out there, at least so far. It's well designed, it has a lot of features, and despite the fact that it has a lot of features, it still feels minimal. Things are out of the way. One of the things that I prefer in a Markdown editor is that there's not a lot of buttons. Like if I wanted to have a lot of buttons and Chrome and all this stuff, I'd just use LibreOffice. You know, that's just the way it is, right? But I don't like that, so I prefer something very minimal. Now, Mark Text is exactly that. It's a white or dark, if you use the dark mode, just sheet of paper, I guess is what you'd call it, and you go through and do your stuff. Now, it supports full range of Markdown text. You can go through and do things like math, do charts, do coding. It has a cool HTML block where you can go through and do a whole bunch of HTML stuff within a div and it'll actually then translate that and make it look like it's a rendered HTML file right there inside of your Markdown file. That's really cool. I didn't even know Markdown was capable of that. I don't know if that's something that they've added or if it's always been that way. I didn't because I didn't know it, but it's really cool. In terms of settings and stuff like that, there's quite a few settings. It allows you to change things like if you want to enable it to save uh, files automatically, you can do that. You can upload images to the cloud if you wanted to use a cloud sync to upload images for your notes and stuff. There's a spot up in the top left hand corner where it will show you the words, characters and paragraphs that you have. So if you're using this for actual like novel writing or whatever, you can go through and know how many words you've written. You can also export as HTML if that's something that you want to do. Now, the one thing that I did not see here was the ability to sync this, your stuff to other places. So I'm assuming that that does not exist. But outside of that, this is a very full featured Markdown editor. And I've been looking for a GUI Markdown editor for a while that is really good and, and is not bloated. Like some of the other ones that I've tried out, not necessarily like bloated, but they you can tell that they're kind of slow. Like maybe they're written in Electron or something. I'm not actually sure what Mark Text is written in, but it was really speedy. And despite the fact that it has some animations and stuff like that, they're not in your face. So I kind of like that. So that is 
Mark Text, it's definitely one of the best Markdown editors, at least in terms of, of GUI Markdown editor that I've found. One thing I will say is that the spell checker is marked as experimental, so I don't know how that will play into actually using it. Uh, I did not give that a test, so just keep that in mind. So that is Mark Text. The next one on the list is called Manuscript. Now, Manuscript is a program that is similar to what you'd get if you bought a Windows application called Scrivener. Now, it's not a one-to-one -one program at all, and it's not as good as Scrivener. I'm going to put that out there right now. But the problem with Scrivener is that it's not on Linux. Like, if you want to use it on Linux, you have to either find a really old binary of it where somebody kind of forked it onto Linux. It's jank is... It's just jank. <laughs> or you have to run it through Wine, which is not a great experience. It's also $40, which is not, I mean, it's not, for what it is, that's actually a reasonable price, but still $40. It is what it is, right? With with Manuscript, you get quite a few of the features that you get with Scrivener. Not all of them, but some of them. You can go through and basically create yourself a novel. And what this is meant to do is organize not only your novel itself, but also everything that kind of surrounds creating a novel. So creating the characters, creating outlines, creating plots, creating the wor you know, world building, and so on and so forth. It's actually really cool. So it, it, it kind of gives you like a step-by-step -step way of creating your own novel. It's... Not well designed. Uh, I'm going to put that out there right now. The icons are huge for some reason. I believe this is built in Qt, so I don't know why they haven't done a better job of actually, you know, designing this well, but, the, you know, they haven't. I will say that some of the smaller buttons, you have no clue what they do until you click on them because there's no tool text in this application at all. I don't know why those tool tips don't exist in this. It would be a really big help, but it doesn't. It also saves upon exiting, which is really nice. It also has a few settings, not a ton of settings, but basically what you'd want. It has a full screen mode where it kind of like a distraction free mode writing mode. And other than that, it is a fairly good option for people who use something like Scrivener if you want a native application like that on Linux. It provides you with the basic functionality is what I'm going to say. So that is Manuscript. Okay, the next one on the list is called LogSec. L-O-G-S-E-Q. Now, this one here I have had a hard time shooting a B-roll for because there's just so many features and I was expecting to work like Notion. So basically what this is is an open source knowledge base similar to what you'd get if you use Notion. Now, if you don't know what Notion is, it's kind of hard to explain. Notion is a note-taking application. It's a database application. It does just a ton of stuff. And LogSec is kind of like that. Now, I will say this, having used Notion and then having used LogSec, they're not even close to being exactly the same. There, there's no feature parity here. That doesn't mean that LogSec is bad. It just means that if you're expecting a everything that Notion has in this, you're just not going to have it. It does have a ton of different blocks. So it, when you go through and create a new page, you have several different blocks that you can put in. You can also go through and tie pages together and stuff like that, which is where the power really comes from. So if you're creating like a wiki or something like that, you can go through and tie all the pages that are supposed to be together, you know, together using links and stuff like that. And then they can, you can travel back and forth between them. It also supports Markdown, so if you want to go through and write in Markdown, it will do that. Now, I would not use this as just like a, like a note-taking application. It's way too powerful for that. It also has a selection of many different plugins that you can go through and install in order to make it even more powerful. I did not get too much into the plugins, so I don't know how useful or how well they work. So just kind of be, you know, your mileage may vary on that kind of stuff. Uh, I will say to try to install another thing because by default, the theme uses solarized dark. And that's a thing that should never be used ever, <laughs> in my opinion. It's just a really bad thing. I can't stand it. Uh, but I, I tried to install a new one. It did not work. So I don't know whether or not that's because I did something wrong or if it's just broken, I don't know. It's possible I was just doing something wrong. So outside of that, like I said, LogSec is really hard to explain because it is, a lot of people probably don't know what a, a, a knowledge base is. And basically what is, is best I can explain it is it's a collection of pages that can be linked together in a certain way to the, by topic and such. It's great if you're going through and creating a, like a wiki 
or a whole bunch of documentation because this stuff can be exported into HTML to create like a website if you wanted to. So because that's why you'd, you'd write it in Markdown because it could be translated into something else. So that is LogSec. I'm going to continue playing with, around with it for a little while, but I don't think that I have an, uh, a use case for it. It's just too powerful for me. I, I don't really need that. But for anybody who uses, uses Notion but wants an open source version, LogSec is probably a good idea for you. So the last one on the list is kind of neat. It's called Glow. And basically what Glow is, is a way to view Markdown in the terminal. Now, the one thing you should know if you write Markdown and you've tried to view that Markdown text in a terminal, you should you know that viewing it just is basically viewing text. Now, a lot of themes and stuff like that have gone through and made it so that there is syntax highlighting in various places for Markdown. It kind of works, but you can't really tell a difference between uh, a H1 header and an H2 header. They're both going to be the same. Maybe they're different colors. They're going to be the same size because in, in terminals, you can't actually make some texts on screen bigger while the rest of it is the regular terminal si font size. With Glow, it does its best to work around that limitation. So if you see some of the examples that are in the B-roll, what it does is it adds a background color to like H1 tags. So if you have an H1, it'll add a background color of blue and then the text becomes white. So it kind of stands out. It still can't make the text, text bigger, but at least looks a little bit different. It also goes through and it renders lists and columns and all that stuff. And it will actually make it look like lists and columns instead of just like asterisks with text beside it, if you know what I mean. So that's Glow. There's not a lot to it. There's not a lot of options and stuff like that. There is a, a TUI version where it will go through and kind of search through all of your files so that you can go through and kind of uh, view them right inside Glow. I find that kind of useless because if you've downloaded a ton of stuff from Git, every single thing that you download from Git or you clone from Git usually has an, a readme.md file and it's going to find all of those. So any files that you have is going to kind of get lost in the miasma of readmes that you probably have on your computer. So that is it for this month's list. If you have applications that you'd like to see on this at, on this list in the future, you can leave those in the comment section below. Make sure you do not leave a link because YouTube will just delete that thing and I'll never see it. If you have other comments about certain applications on this list, you can also leave those in the comment section below. I really do appreciate everyone who comments and I enjoy our conversations. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, Patrick L, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Knife and Tool, Steve A, CyberGuy Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin E, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark Bandit 6, Vlad A, and Primus. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.